welcome to another edition of the Silver Road Selection. It's a grey, miserable and rainy day out there, so the perfect time to review another game. And today I'm looking at Galaxy Birds, which was the first of two games done for Firebird software by Sensible Software. I've actually already reviewed the other one, which was Oh No. This one was released in 1986 and is a fairly uncommon game to find out there. My copy cost me £3.50, so let's take a look at Galaxy Birds. So we've got a pretty nice cover art on this game, you can see it's very purple, we've got some planets in the background and some birds flying at the top there which are ducks in little sort of backpacks or parachutes I suppose they are, or are they jetpacks, I'm not really sure. They look like parachutes but they've got jets coming out of them. Anyway, so they've also got goggles on, so there's the ducks and we've also got a multi-beaked, multi-eyed bird being pooped on at the front there as well and the Galaxy Birds logo is quite extravagant as well. That's also on the spine and you can also see that the background graphic wraps around. So a couple of screenshots which are pretty straightforward looking things. It's obviously a kind of Galaxian Galaga style game you can see from the screenshots with some different kinds of enemies there. And the blurb for the game says put on a brave face, wipe out the Galaxy Birds and save the world again. Inside the inlay we've got the usual list of games for different systems on the Firebird range. We've got the usual mail order in crowd thing. And then we've got the description of the game, the instructions, Galaxy Birds, copyright 1986 sensible software, the saga of the Galaxy Birds. And there's a very elaborate detailed story there, backstory for the Galaxy Birds who are trying to find a planet to colonize effectively. And eventually they settle on Earth and therefore you've got to try and wipe them out before they take over Earth with their deadly psychic chemistry, whatever that is. It says there at the bottom, you are now the only human left except for a few chartered surveyors in Milton Keynes, so you must put on a brave face, kill the Galaxy Birds and save the world again. Then it's got loading instructions, and the gameplay instructions could not be more simple. Playing the game, insert a joystick into port 2 of the Commodore 64, Select one or two players, press the fire button and off you go. So here we can see the loading screen. Pretty simplistic stuff. You've got the recognisable sensible software logo in the bottom right hand corner there. Otherwise it just says Galaxy Birds at the top and it's got a giant seagull on it in space. So here's a title screen which you can see is fairly simplistic. You've got the birds who are the enemies flocking down the screen in the background and a star field. Got the score on the right hand side, copyright at the bottom and just the option to select one or two players and some background noise, you can't really call it music, it's just kind of a very fast bleeping noise and also you've got a couple of scrolling messages, one of them's got the high score table which has got five entries and also the controls and then the bottom half has got uh, Welcome to Galaxy Birds, the game they couldn't stop and it's basically got the overview of the game which we've already seen in the instructions uh, which is pretty handy that we have because it scrolls by so quickly you'd have to be particularly good with your eyes to spot and read it all so anyway that's the title screen, pretty simplistic stuff and the game itself is quite simplistic as well so let's get started Okay, so the idea of the game is it's a gallery shooter, it's left, right and shoot uh, and it's obviously inspired by games like Galaga, Galaxian and Phoenix. So the birds come flocking down the screen, you've got to shoot the birds. They never form into a formation like they would in Galaga or Galaxian, so it's actually a little bit more like some of the levels on Phoenix in that respect. And also the birds never shoot at you, none of the enemies shoot at you. So it's literally just dodge the birds and shoot them and try and make it to the next stage. Now the first flock of birds I would say are probably meant to be swans and as we all know if we grew up in the 80s swans are very dangerous they're capable of breaking your arm so get, better get rid of these swans and move on to the next stage as soon as possible. Now on a lot of stages you can actually just sit quite still and shoot and everything will just come at you. Also you can hold the uh, fire button down to continually shoot which makes life a little bit easier and you just focus on dodging the birds. You see this can just move from side to side and across the screen eventually you'll get them all. Move on to level 2 which are, I've no idea what these are supposed to be, maybe ostriches or something. 
So the graphics are pretty simple, you've just got the bird sprites and other sprites for other enemies that come along a bit later if we get that far. Uh, you've got the player sprite which is just a pretty crudely drawn spaceship and some bullets. The star field in the background is reasonably nice. Oh, there goes a life. The explosion is quite nice when you get blown up. Now if you do lose a life then you end up starting back from the beginning of the stage. So sound wise as well I should mention that the only sound really is the sound of your bullets firing and the background music which apparently is somehow randomly generated or procedurally generated. Now to me it always sounds the same every time but apparently the music the longer you go on it makes itself up as it goes along which is a quite clever programming trick but actually the sound is not particularly good, the music's not particularly tuneful, probably as a result of being done sort of on the fly. There we go, that's level two completed. This time you get ones that kind of dive at you, and again, you just gotta try and avoid them. They do kind of flock a bit more randomly here, so they are a bit trickier to get rid of sometimes. It's basically just patience, waiting for a moment to get underneath them and shoot, which is sometimes easier and sometimes not. You do get an extra life at 10,000 points, which you've seen the shootable construction kit videos I've done that's a, a trait that's it's got in common with that product from uh, Sensible Software so I mean this is pretty much it it's just a variety of different enemies to shoot at they do the score that you get for the enemies does go up like a multiplier with each level and um, so the further you get the higher score you get for the enemies just got one of these left to get Ooh, there we go okay so now we've got a flock of ducks and these you can actually just sit here and shoot them all with no effort whatsoever. As I said there are a few stages like that. This one isn't though, this is probably the hardest of the stages certainly so far and I don't think it gets much harder than this because they kind of, I think these are seagulls probably and they kind of move quite erratically, they can crash into you unexpectedly. Um, so yeah this is one of the more difficult of the levels and I've got no lives left now so if I get hit then this will be the end. And they said that, I'm doing alright so far. No, there we go. Jinxed myself there, just as I'm about to get to 10,000 points in an extra life. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the game. So what I'm going to try and do is show you some of the later stages. Uh, you don't really need to see the first five levels, you've just seen them. Uh, it's much more of the same, but just different kind of sprites. And some of the sprites later on in the game are quite amusing. So it would be quite nice to show you some of them. Okay, so I've just got past the seagull level and I'm on to some, I don't know what these are supposed to be, green birds is basically the best way to describe them and they've just killed me. But I've got past 10,000 points, still got a couple of lives left. These guys move pretty quickly. But it has to be said, if you stay still on a lot of the levels, you can just shoot almost everything that comes at you. I feel like one of them just going to get me right at the end just to prove me wrong there, but now I've just got the one left, so... No, oh, it did get me as well, that's annoying. But on these later levels, you, oh, I did get the last one. So again, these look pretty straightforward. These are like, kind of like Phoenix sort of birds from the game Phoenix. I mean, they don't look like Phoenixes particularly. And um, they just kind of go a bit slowly and then dive at you. So not too difficult to get past. And I'm getting close because I'm now on a higher level and get more points for each enemy killed. It doesn't take much to get up to another 10,000 points in another life, which I just managed to do. See if we can get past this one. Again, these are pretty challenging, are they? Or I don't know. Sometimes I think it's quite difficult to shoot them, and sometimes some of these enemies you just literally just sit underneath them and shoot at them, and they, they just come into your line of fire. And just occasionally one of them will just get you as it goes past, and you end up losing a life and having to start again. They've got very erratic flight patterns, whatever these are supposed to be. Some kind of green thing, but I've no idea what kind of bird... Oh, there we go. That's game over, I think. There we go, I've got my name in the high score table at least this time. Top score with 25,520. So I'm going to give it one more shot and try and get a bit further. Uh, if I do, then I'll record it and show you, and if I don't, then I'll just come back to this screen and give you the review scores I think. Okay so I'm at the point with the brown phoenix things again and um, I've only got one life left so I'm not sure how much further I'm going to go on. I'm not sure I'm going to want to play through another game. 
so we'll see how far we get this time around and then we'll probably call it a day. Back at the green ones, I think this is as far as I got last time, so let's see if we can get past here at least and show a few more of the enemies off. I imagine there is a knack to working out the attack pattern for each of these uh, different types of enemy. Uh, I haven't quite worked it out. For some I have and for some I definitely haven't. Getting quite close to the end here, I think there's only two left now. Okay, here we go, that was a load of penguins I think. And these you can, again, oh I was going to say they're one of the ones where you can just sit there and let them dive into your line of fire, but that, that turned out not to be true in the end. But they cluster quite closely together, so it's quite easy to get under them, I think. I think they're penguins. Maybe they're dodos, actually. I'm struggling to find a gap here, yeah. This has gone badly now. I don't think I'm going to get any further than this screen. But you never know. They are a bit annoying when they pop off one side of the screen onto the other because if you're stuck at the sides and they come onto your side of the screen then suddenly you end up losing a life unexpectedly. Wow, it's really hard to find a gap to get underneath these. No, and that's it, that's going to be game over. It's a bit of a shame because a little bit further through the game you do get to see some sprites that are based on uh, characters and objects from other games such as asteroids and uh, you've got little uh, international karate characters and things like that, which are quite fun. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't get that far, and I can't really be bothered to play it again. It does take a bit of time to get to the point where you start to see those other enemies. And eventually, it loops back around, and you get back to the beginning. What I've found is when I've got to a certain point in the game, and it's usually where the non-bird characters come into it, it becomes really quite easy, and you can just sit there and fire up the screen uh, incessantly and kill virtually everything without getting hit. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to show you that in this video. I don't think I'll be bothered to uh, to try it. So let's get on with the review scores. So firstly, packaging I thought was pretty decent. Nice image on the front cover. The instructions were fairly limited, but the backstory was quite interesting and fun. Uh, the instructions were very simplistic, but so is the game, so that's fair enough. Presentation's all right. It's just a title screen with a lot of text on, really, and the birds flying in the background. So I'm going to give that 6 out of 10. Graphics were pretty average. Uh, you basically got some feel, fairly nicely drawn sprites, but not much else. Uh, pretty repetitive as well, obviously. So I'm going to go with 5 out of 10 for the graphics. Sound I'm going to give 6 out of 10, because even though the music isn't particularly great and the sound effects aren't amazing either, I do like the idea that that music is somehow randomly generated, which is quite a cool idea. So from a technical perspective, Quite a nice idea, even if the music itself wasn't that great. And playability, uh, it's a pretty average game. It gets boring fairly quickly. If you just want a mindless blast for 10 or 15 minutes, then it does do the job. But by the time we got to 1986, it was already quite a dated concept. So for that reason, I'm going to give it a playability score of 5 out of 10. That gives a total score of 6.1. And I would say it's just about worth the 199 asking price. As long as you know what you're getting, it's a very straightforward left right and shoot type space game uh, no real enemy formations no enemies shooting at you no power-ups or anything like that either so a very simplistic game but good for a five or ten minute blast as i said i don't think sensible software are trying to do anything groundbreaking with this game they were probably just having a bit of fun playing around and decided it was just about good enough to publish so yeah i would say worth the 199 just about as long as you knew what you were getting so that's it that concludes my review of galaxy birds if you have any thoughts about the game, then please let me know in the comments, and I'll be back with another game review soon. But I should mention that this was my 40th game review, so if you've been following the series so far, you'll know what's coming up next. After that will be another game review, of course. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.